Hello, welcome to Philately Today. I'm Randall Sherman, Secretary of the Chicago Philatelic Society. And today we're going to be previewing the upcoming Chicago PEX 2008 stamp show, the largest postage stamp show in, in America during the fall season. And with me is the uh, General Chairman of Chicago PEX 2008, uh, fellow board member of the Chicago Philatelic Society, Al Kugel. Thank you for coming, Al. Thank you. And now the show is going to be November 21st to 23rd. It's going to be out in the northwest suburbs again at the Sheridan Chicago Northwest. It's at 3400 West Euclid in Arlington Heights, just west of Arlington Park Racetrack. And uh, it's accessible by, you know, by, by public transportation via the uh, Metra uh, Union Pacific Northwest line. You get off at Arlington uh, Park Station and... Uh, and call the hotel for a shuttle or, or, or simply drive over there. That's free parking and free admission. So um, this year, Al, uh, it's basically got a Scandinavian flavor, I'm told. Yes, we're going to have the annual meeting of the Scandinavian Collectors Club, which is a group of stamp collectors and postal history collectors uh, of the northern part of Europe uh, that we call Scandinavia. So. Uh, mostly Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, but there'll probably be some with uh, Iceland and maybe a few with Finland. Not to mention the uh, Faroe Islands, <laughs> and what Island, uh, and Greenland, and even, even, even some probably some discussion of old stamps from the Danish West Indies before the U.S. purchased them and turned them into the U.S. Virgin Islands in 1917. In any event, uh, that's not the only convention organization that's going to be meeting at uh, Chicago PEX, although it's the largest of the three groups that, will, that are scheduled to be there, I, I believe. Yes, we have uh, two other groups that are going to have their annual conventions with us this year. Uh, the Mobile Post Office Society, these are people that collect letters that have postmarks on them from moving post offices. In other words, it can be railway post offices, buses, ships, anything that had a post office on uh, the seas or on the land. Uh, there, I don't know of any post offices in the air. They carry mail, but they don't post, they don't cancel it. But uh, these go back, you know, for over a century. And uh, people it collect It used to be quite common here in Chicago. They had. So yeah. I believe I believe a century ago they had streetcars that uh, we had streetcars that canceled mail. Now we're talking about way back in yeah. the in the nineteenth century, late nineteenth century, and such. Yes. I, I've seen several presentations over the years in the Chicago area on that on that subject alone. Yeah, the major uh, street railway lines had a guy on there that collected the mail that people would just hand in. They had a box, and then he would cancel it and put it off at the post office when they got there. So you could actually collect all these uh, letters that went through that process. And the third group is uh, some, you know, it has some similarities or some, some overlap with Mo Mobile Post Office Society. That would be the Auxiliary Markings Club. Yes, auxiliary markings are uh, non-cancellations that are put on letters by the post office to give directions. Sometimes it says postage due, sometimes it says return to sender, whatever the thing is that they want to tell the postal people uh, how to handle that letter. Uh, that's an auxiliary marking. It doesn't cancel the stamps, but it, it does show up on there, and there are lots of different kinds, and uh, the group that's meeting with us is the group specializing in those markings. See, this just brings out a point that that people need to understand about philately, that there is no one single way to collect in this hobby. I mean, you can collect uh, generally stuff from around the world. You can focus on a power of the world, such as the Scandinavian countries, as the Scandinavian Collector Club members do. You can focus on some, on some specialized service, such as the, the Mobile Post Office Society. Uh, or you can also focus on, on on specialized markings and see what you get can get from there, like the Auxiliary Markings Club. And there are many others. And, and so you have a wide range. And people who come to this show, and, it, and I point out that the admission, there's free admission and uh, throughout the three days, free parking at, at, at the uh, Sheridan uh, in Arlington Heights. You can get to, you, you can see things that amaze you, and there some of the exhibits we'll be talking about are absolutely amazing. 
Now, your job as as the uh, as show committee chairman, I mean, it, it, you know, people. Let's try to talk briefly about what that entails, because it, it it involves getting a lot of planning done, and uh, of course, a lot of this stuff is done well in advance. These societies scheduled to come in Chicago years in advance. I mean, we, we do have to, we are fortunate <laughs> in that regard. Yes, they, they like to come to Chicago. It's a very good philatelic center, and it's near the middle of the country, so it's easy to get here from all parts of the United States. And even so, we get a few people coming from foreign countries. <laughs> we have one of the judges this year who's coming from Norway. He's an expert on Scandinavia, and we added him to the jury so that we could get uh, a better evaluation of the Scandinavian exhibits. And, now, and you have quite a number of Scandinavian exhibits. I think yes, you've got do. about uh, well over a dozen uh, uh, exhibits there from uh, uh, Scandinavia alone. Then you have several others for the, from the other two societies. And you have quite a number of general topic exhibits that, uh, because this is a, a, a national level show, it's part of the World Series of Philately. And explain what that is to our viewers. Well, every year there's 32 shows around the United States in different cities. And uh, they each have their own scheduled time. Ours happens to be the weekend before Thanksgiving. We don't want to go any later than that because being in Chicago, you know the weather can turn bad once we get into December. So it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving. And we get a big crowd. I would say we're probably the second largest national uh, stamp show in the United States. Uh, the championship which is held in the summer every year in a different city each year uh, is the largest. But we're probably very close to the second largest in terms of the number of frames of exhibits we have, in terms of the number of people that attend, and in terms of the number of dealers who are offering stamps and covers and uh, other things that the collectors want to buy. So uh, we are a, a large show and we're the last one of the calendar year, so uh, if you don't get into this one, you don't. You have to wait till next year. Well, yeah, and and we get a lot of people who who come in, and I mean, this is a larger show. I mean, the minimum requirement, I believe, is 156 frames, which is uh, six uh, sixteen eight and a half by eleven pages. Uh, so you're, you're you know, and in and, and how many frames are there this year in Chicago Pax? Three hundred and thirty-seven frames. So you have so it's more twice as big as the as minimum a, size national show. And so, so we're talking about a huge show, and and some of the exhibits, and we're I'm going to mention one exhibit in particular because it is, I, I mean, I mean, this it's it's just something absolutely amazing, and it's a, an exhibit by one of our fellow board. Board members, uh, it's uh, Elliot Landau. It's called Lincoln's Slavery in the Civil War. It first made its debut at the National Stamp Show uh, out in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, in August. And this is a photo showing him pointing out a facet of the exhibit. And what he's pointing at, and people are gaping at, at is uh, uh, this is this called display class exhibit. So you can get all sorts of miscellaneous material along with the the, the stamps and covers and such, and one of the things he threw in is an authentic set of slave shackles. And you can see it there, and it will be here at, on, at the uh, show uh, November 21st through the 23rd. And, it's, uh, and, and as I said, people there were amazed by it. It was like, you know, you, you saw stuff that, you know, and, and other exhibitors have done similar things with their areas. We have uh, an exhibit called the Murder of Ladice, which has been here before. It talks about uh, about the the, the 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 destruction of that uh, select of Slovakian city by the Nazis during World War II, and and, and how it has been remembered since. Uh, you have have a variety of other exhibits, and one of the exhibits will win. We don't know. It could be could be a general exhibit. Could be one of the uh, from the, one of the three. Convening societies, and we'll find it out at the banquet on uh, Saturday the 22nd. And it'll be a lot of, a lot, a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> the only thing we know is that it won't be one of yours because you're, you're, you're ex when you exhibit at this show, it's always non competitive. Yeah, I don't think I should be competing against the people that come here to show us their exhibits. Uh, you know, there's plenty of other shows in the country. And, I and, can and rest assured, you, and, and for the record, there, you, you do uh, exhibit, and you are one of the most 
uh, noted and perhaps one of the most prolific exhibitors uh, in this country, uh, maybe the world. I'm, I'm quantity, if not quality. <laughs> no, uh, they're quality. Uh, uh, okay, in addition to, to that, we also should point out some other facets about this show. Uh, besides having the variety of general exhibits, many of which are, 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 are contenders for major awards, the exhibits from the Scandinavian Collectors Club, some of their best best exhibits from their members, the Auxiliary Markings Club, the best exhibits from their members, the Mobile Post Office Society, best exhibits from their members. We also have something ca called the uh, Local Stamp Club One Frame uh, Exhibit Competition. Now explain that to, to, to the people who might be uh, tuning in. Well, well, the Chicago Philatelic Society sponsors the Chicago Peck Show. There are uh, more than a dozen uh, local stamp clubs all around the Chicago land area, in other words, in the suburbs, in the south area of the city, in the north area, all the way up the North Shore. So we invite each of those clubs to put in a frame with 16 pages of material from their members to explain what they, what they collect, show a sample of it. Uh, the first page will tell you about the club, where it meets, and when it meets. And the last page is a wrap-up of what you're looking at. So there's, those are not competing per se. They, they're not competing in the regular show. They compete against each other. So we have the, the club frames. We have a, a, the best club frame and, and down to the, the least good. So uh, these are really educational because they, sh they will show you a vast array of different things that the members of these different clubs uh, it, it collect and exhibit. And it, it explains to people where there is a meeting that might be much nearer where they live. Uh, a lot of people don't come downtown in the evening for the uh, CPS meeting, but they may go to a club in the west suburbs or in the north or south side. So that's, that's a, a place where we educate people as to what other philatelic activities go on in the city. And this year, uh, this is our, the third year that the sh show's having the uh, this competition, and now you're up to 21 different clubs. Every year we get a few more. And it's it not just, you know, Chicago clubs. I mean, we're talking about we've got at least two clubs that I can, I, I can tell coming up from uh, the uh, greater Milwaukee area. We've got uh, the Champaign-Urbana Stamp Club from downstate, the Rockford Stamp Club uh, out, out in the north central Illinois. And so you're getting a lot of, uh, of attention from, from a wide area. It's basically beca it became, it's become now a regional not just, uh, a thing because this is the big show and this is an opportunity for them to, uh, to get involved. And three of, the three of them, by the way, are, are, are school, school clubs in, in schools that one of our members, uh, Jim Ashby, uh, has uh, set up uh, stamp clubs in three elementary schools in Elmwood Park, a suburb of Chicago, and at St. Celestine Elmwood School and John Mills School, and each of them are, are, are have, have have their 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 kids have competing, and they're in their the only difference is those three uh, uh, entries are going to be with the youth exhibits, which are in a separate room uh, with the with the youth youth uh, activities. There. Yeah, we actually have 17 frames of youth material in a special room where the, the youth can hang out. There's We give them the opportunity to, to get some free stamps, some albums, and other material that they need for their collecting. And we have people there who can answer questions for them. So the youth activity is pretty uh, uh, hot and heavy, particularly on Friday. We're gonna have, Why is that? We're going to have three busloads of the students from these schools come and spend about four hours at the show. They will come, they'll bring their lunches. We'll give, we have a big meeting room where they can leave their coats and their lunches. Then we'll, they go out, and one group will go to the youth room, one group will go to the bourse where the dealers are offering stamps to, for sale, and one room will go look at exhibits. And then they'll change around so they each, every kid gets to do all those things as well as eat their lunch, which is probably the highlight of their day, but nonetheless. And then they go back to school in the buses, so they're there before the course the class leaves out. And, and it's, it is amazing. Of course, it does uh, sp uh, spice up the first day of the show. Uh, the second, because that, because basically we don't have a lot of meetings that, with the first day because the, one of the, the, our would-be meeting rooms of course, is being used uh, used by uh, the, the juries. The jury, two the, of them. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Oh, yes. We should point out that 
in addition to, to the 337 frames of Feltolic exhibits, we have 37 uh, Feltolic literature exhibits. We, Chicago Pex was what, the th first show? I to think we're the first one to first offer one. a com competition for Feltolic literature. And so, so, so we're the oldest uh, Feltolic literature competition around. You have 37 entries this year, so you have a sep separate jury that's you know, been reading the, uh, these entries and, and studying them. These, for the these are months. magazines and journals and articles, catalogs, anything that's literature pertaining to stamps can be submitted. And, uh, and, and, and these are, uh, if people want to glance at them, we ha you know, people can take we have them see there what they for people to look, look at. at. And, and, it's, and some of these are, are fascinating. You see some of these catalogs that uh, some of these companies have put out, uh, and obviously they, they put them out as lost leaders. They're trying to. <laughs> Because they're, you know, trying to attract, say, hey, we're going to win a bunch of awards, and then, uh, you know, you know, you, you, you know, everyone wants to, uh, you know, uh, you know, sell their stuff through their auction service because, hey, you know, look at this fantastic looking uh, auction catalog they put out and what has won all these awards. It certainly doesn't hurt them. And so, so obviously, it's a, it's a. Well, they regard this as a cost of doing business. Right, so it's useful. Most people don't pay anything for the catalog. No, it's, so it's, it's you, one, you get these wonderful, wonderful things. Are they're a good uh, thing to go into a library? But there are also many Philatelic, uh books and, and, and articles. I mean, you have uh, several of them are done by our fellow CPS members, and uh, and I suspect that they'll be the ones at least who will get their awards that night. It usually. We don't get a lot of the Feltolic literature uh, uh, winners at the. Uh, they banquet. send them in. They don't really come to the banquet. We, we have a few, basically, the people from, who are members of the society will be there anyway, but uh, at least we, that's usually the case uh, it, since some of these are being sent from overseas. But, uh, you know, hey, it, it helps spice up and gives a facet. And even if you don't want any of that, you, at least you can come to the show, folks. And, and if you need to. Purchase stamps. Your your Christmas holiday stamp needs. There's going. You know, we have a, a U.S. Postal Service uh, booth, full service. Everything you need, any stamps you need, any amounts values you need, they ha they have that stuff available. And uh, and so if you you wanted a stamp and it wasn't available earlier, it's probably still there. If it's on sale in the postal service, they generally try to get some. Uh, s supply of it so that anything a collector wants that's still available would be available at this at this booth. And they'll even, they'll even be there on Sunday. So, uh, I should say though they close the post office at four because they have to take the inventory back to the main post office and put it in the safe. Yeah. In any event, uh, the, you know we ha there are a number of other uh, societies and such that also have uh, meetings. In addition to the each of your three convening societies will have their annual membership meeting at the show on Saturday the 22nd. But we'll also see think, uh, groups like the Illinois Postal History Society will, will be meeting, uh, the Chicago Land First Day Cover Society, Chapter 5 of the Germany Feltolic Society, that's the local chapter, uh, will be there. Uh, we're also on Sunday. We'll have a number of other groups: the Space Unit, uh, Faith Topic Study Unit uh, meeting, uh, the Jack Knight Chicago Air Mail Society, and the British North American Philatelic Society. All will be meeting at, at the show, and and uh, uh, opportunities for people to uh, you know get to know some other facets of philately. And uh, these meetings are open. And all those uh, meetings are open to any visitor who wants and, to attend. And, and you can learn, you know. Find something useful. You may, may find a, a facet of philately you had. You, you might fi become interested in. And it's we also should talk a little about the bourse. Yeah. Uh, we have 75 dealers. Uh, these are people who will buy and sell stamps at the show. They ha each have a booth, and they have their sign up saying who they are. Sometimes what they're most interested in. And as I say, they, they look to buy things because they need to have more material for their customers, and they certainly are and, and this, and this involved show, in yeah, selling. In fact, the show is 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 highly sought after by by these uh, dealers because it provide it's the last really big show of the year, and there, there's like a two two months where there's really not a lot going on for them in terms of major shows. Uh, and so many of them have stores back with, in their cities where they're from, 
And so uh, they'll be buying, selling from each other in order to <laughs> replenish stock. Uh, we also, some of the each year we make sure that there are some 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 dealers that specialize in the areas that we have uh, with our convening societies. This yeah, time, we particularly have the, with the Scandinavian. We have the primary dealer in Scandinavian philatelic material will have a booth because this is this is a big show for him. All of his customers <laughs> will likely be attending the show. Yes, so so, so that gives them to in fact. A lot, of a lot of major shows have had trouble fill getting a lot of dealers, but fortunately, Chicago Pex, you know, it, it was basically booked up eight, uh, eight oh, right months ago. From, yeah, from January. I mean, it's like, you know, they got you know a waiting list. Almost nobody else has a waiting list. They say, what? What's that? I mean, they're <laughs> they're scrambling to just you know you know not to you know have a lot of empty space in their facility. And, we're, and here we're, it's well, let's say. We maximize the use of the facility. <laughs> we do use all the space there is available. Also, this time we have an auction. Yes, yeah, for the first time in a lot in a long time, uh, we will have a three-day philatelic auction. Now, this is a big deal. This means they sell. Uh, the auction goes on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, at different hours and at different days. But uh, I would say, you know, there'll be a vast amount of material on sale. And uh, some of it will be low-class material that sells, you know, you can get a whole box full of covers for $50 or less, or you can get cover, you can get items that sell for hundreds and hundreds of dollars or, each or individually. Or even thousands. Or even case. thousands, maybe. <laughs> but it, this is a big thing if people need certain items and you can't find them in a, in a normal bourse or in a stamp store, you can sometimes find these in auctions because that's where the, the collectors tend to put their better material. So uh, you have a chance to buy something you might not otherwise be able to get. So I would say uh, this: we were very pleased to be able to have this auction. The and if it works out fine, superior, we expect yeah. to have it annually. Well, that's good to know because it does provide an opportunity. And of course, uh, in addition to, to, to this time, we also have another new feast feature that prior to the show, I mean, uh, on the Wednesday and Thursday, two days before the show, the American Philatelic Society, the national orga uh, phil organization, is scheduled to have uh, seminars. They're going to have two seminars, one on how to exhibit philatelic material and the other on the particular issue of Great Britain that was in use for a long time and has a lot of different aspects and varieties to it. One of the real experts on that uh, particular set of stamps is going to uh, give an explanatory talk and show examples of those stamps. It's called the Machen issue of Great Britain. It's got the, the head of the Queen on there, which is not surprising. Uh, but they used that for several decades they now. They have. It's, it's yeah, all it, kinds it has, of. And she has, hasn't <laughs> aged on those, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, but one. Th but the other one, of course, is about on, on, on exhibiting. It's from a, from one of our fellow members, Rich Drews, and somebody who has exhibited and judged. And knows and knows what he's and, about. And, and as a past recipient of the uh, champion champions award, he you know he has reached the pinnacle uh, in, in yeah. exhibiting. Yes, yeah, and so it's uh, so it is. And he's going to have samples from a lot of different exhibits there. So he tell you this is what you should do, and this is what you shouldn't do. So it should be very worthwhile. Now those are not directly connected with the show, otherwise other than it, it's in the same facility, and it's the two days before. The actual exhibition, but it will help. It'll help bring more It'll people. Bring more here. people in, yes. And that's that's helpful because uh, it uh, helps helps attract attention, and uh, people are com will come in and certainly will stay for at least the first part of the show because they're you know want you know once oh, we they're certainly there. hope so. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean I can't see why they wouldn't. It's uh, you know fascinating uh, all these fascinating material. They'll they'll want to hang around and see see some of these exhibits. And uh, this is uh, certainly an interesting opportunity. Now, in the future years, I mean, we're, we're talking about the fact that, that's it, that, that the show is committed to being at that site next year as well. We have a contract for next year. We would like to enter into a new contract sometime in 2009 for the years beyond. But because, because, partly because... We've already booked uh, a society. <laughs> We're going to have a show like, somewhere. <laughs> we're, we, we've already got societies committed, through, I think, like through 2013 to 13 and such. Yeah. And, and, I mean, it's like uh, 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 very uh, attentive. And uh, 
We have a banquet, of course. It'll be on Saturday night. In fact, it's the same room where the where the, where where the, the auction, auction is. is. So it's on Saturday. That you know they'll start early and end mid afternoon. They'll I guess. close down the auction at about three thirty, so that the hotel group can move the chairs where the people sit to bid, move them out, and bring in the tables where we have the banquet. So yeah, we're going to get double yeah. duty out of that room on Saturday. And at the banquet, we'll also, uh, it will, in addition to the various. Uh, Awards that we'll be giving out for the exhibits. We'll also be uh, presenting one award that the society g gives out, which is the uh, Saul Newberry Award. Uh, you know, it's uh, and and one of us is going to be having to give that speech to. Randy is it. very modest. He won it last year, so that gets you the right to give the speech for the next year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I rest assured, unlike my, well, the gentleman who who surprised me with it, I will not be <laughs> quoting Mark Twain. <laughs> and so, so, but it, it, is a, it is a highlight, and it is one of the most uh, uh, prestigious awards. Uh, it's, a, it's a Lifetime Achievement Award here in the Chicago area. For service area. to Chicago. You've won it and, as well. Yeah. And uh, as I say, it's, uh, it's certainly... But you a, have to do a lot of work in order to be considered for yes, that. Yes, as and, I as you know. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> you've, you've done it. Yes, so. uh, but... Uh, Basically, now again, you know, for people who want, who want information, uh, you know, the, uh, they can go to the Chicago Pex web CPS website, which is www. Chicagopex.com. Uh, yeah, and we we've we've been showing that on the screen throughout the show, and uh, you know, it gives all the information, and uh, or you can call the number we've had on the screen, which uh, you know, can give you I'll give you plenty of information. Uh, that you need to know. And as I say, we have a variety of opportunities. We also have the United Nations Postal Administration. We should point out that they'll have all the new issues from the UN that you can purchase as well. And you know, for those who collect UN material, uh, they, they're there at the show, and that gives another opportunity for more stamps. Yeah, I should and point out that all the stamps that are being sold at the show by the U.S. Postal Service and the UN are at face value, so you're not paying any premium over what you would and, pay. And, and I should point out that the American Philatelic Society will have their booth, yes, which will. will have information for the APS, and will have, you know you can buy you can buy handy ties like this one here, <laughs> uh, you know, and without paying sales tax, mind you, uh, uh, and, you know, and, and such, which is, which which is nice, and uh, they have a lot of other good, neat gifts. Uh, that people might find interesting if they're looking for holiday shopping. For, and they have for some people. of their literature and other things. Yeah, and, and you, you can, can play. And you can sign up to be an APS member too. And yeah. we'll take a membership for the CPS. We'll, we'll give you. We CPS definitely will. It'll save your postage. Uh, Al, again, uh, it's November twenty first to twenty third, Chicago Pex two thousand eight. Uh, shows open from ten a.m. to six p.m. Friday and Saturday, ten to four on Sunday. Al Kugel, uh, thanks for coming. This is rant, uh, glad, glad you could make it. Well, we invite everybody and hope a lot of you can come. That's Randall Sherman for Philately Today. Thank you.